Hi guys, this is Linton from South Africa. Um, in this video, I'd like to show you, or at least walk you through how I approach modeling um, stuff with vellum, um, particularly like very loose or somewhat organic um, packaging, um, if ever I'm given a product like that. So today we have your favorite brand of something that I'll be um, showing you how I went about um, modeling that. It seems a bit, what's the word, um, elaborate, but it honestly, in my opinion, it's a bit simpler doing it this way than trying to manually model or sculpt it in, um, in your favorite sculpting program, hopefully Blender. Um, you, you, in my opinion, you're probably better off doing it this way because at least the UVs are somewhat accurate or mostly accurate um, because Venom wouldn't stretch it too far, you know, unlike trying to then unwrap it and then get all, all that right. You can still get it right, it just takes longer in my opinion. Whereas if you get this process down to a T, you can do a product like this in about 45 minutes um, or less actually. Um, anyway, so I'll also be walking you guys through a little tool I a little tool I build uh, built for sp particularly um, box shaped sort of um, packaging, which makes it like which makes a longer process quite short. They have something similar um, in C4D that works quite well, but I wasn't happy with the topology that it gave me and the amount of cleanup I'd have to do after. Should I want to add more detail? Um, to those models anyway So how you typically approach this I would usually have like a grid that I sort of Take down the subdivisions for it or the detail from it and then I UV project um, I UV project the UVs top down to flat a flat thing then I quickly have the model or the texture that I want to sort of cut um, The texture that I want to to, to be on the actual product with hopefully it's die cut and then I'll find where the die cut this one doesn't have a die cut but I'll show you one with the die cut but then you sort of find where the seams would be um, and then I basically deleted stuff that I didn't need um, with a topo build um, then I used this tool that I built um, which I'll be showing you guys shortly it basically folds it in up into a box um, for me without having to actually manually do it using like an edit or whatever um, to do it. So maybe I should show you guys that first before I, I go too far. So, okay, so the tool I built is particularly for box shaped um, models, uh, which are relatively simple to model, but I think it's, it, it's just made it a whole lot simpler where you would create a grid, UV project um, on a planar um, surface and then a quick shade to sort of show you um, the texture and then you'd have a top of build um, node where you're basically cutting out where the die cut would be and basically a die cut is those red and dotted lines that tell the manufacturer what to fold and what to cut out and to leave in. Um, so you'd have that, you build that, uh, mine's not perfect, it's just for this demonstration. Then I added a bit of subdivision um, of what I have. They have, a, they have a similar tool in C4D, but I don't like the, the, sub, um, the type of models it creates. I prefer to have four-sided um, instead of end guns and that sort of thing. Um, and triangles, it kind of has that and I quite didn't like that I wanted something in Houdini too. So I decided to build this tool with the help of Steven. Um, so then you know, UV project it back and then I here's the tool itself. It's some simple. Um, you'd have basically the amount that you want to fold, which I'll show you guys and you can animate it. I'll show you how that works. And the number of folds, you just add a fold for each fold that you need. You probably need quite a few for this one. Um, but I'll show you individually and you'll sort of see how it works. So you'd pick out for the edge group, you'd pick out the edges which you'd like to fold the package on and hopefully, not hopefully, it should not be something that you need to pick out the whole edge loop for that area because it then splits 
the polygons between um, it splits the polygons between that edge basically so polygons on the left I mean polygons on the right of that edge so if you like had to leave out for instance this edge loop here it would have a hard time figuring it out so you have to make sure you've got that entire edge loop selection um, sort of selected so you pick that out and this is where um, you can actually fold it and then you reverse it um, if you need to reverse it like I do then once you're done you can basically add the next um, fold which is between the sides two and three uh, make sure you have all selected properly um, to reverse it um, and so forth as you can see this is how it works it's kind of a bit broken when you when you don't have anything selected which is something I haven't figured out but the tool still um, largely works for what you need it for just make sure you have something selected and then you can reverse it um, then here you have your packaging to a certain extent um, well the main boxy shaped now you just need to make sure those flaps fold properly um, as you can tell it's a bit of a tedious task but I think in my opinion it honestly it's better than modeling a box and trying to figure out the dimensions and that sort of thing um, I forgot where I was I'm just gonna select this one but yeah yeah I, I really enjoy having to do it like this because I've had a quite a few box shaped things to do within a very limited amount of time so it literally this saves me a lot of time without having to um, to worry about too many things and even the UVs come out almost perfect because you projected it from the top down with a flat sort of um, texture uh, which you typically have um, cool so I'll go through the rest of it so I might speed up this time lapse okay. so once you have your box sort of created your box shaped um, packaging created you can then take the modeling further and maybe add a lattice so you can polish it a bit more you can add um, an extrusion a bevel around the edges in case you want to make it um, high definition but at least you have the shape and it's the type to polish that you want there's obviously a little bit of R&D that you're gonna need to do to figure out um, what affects what um, in terms of how you create these edges like I could be able this edge to make it round and add a lot of subdivisions but for this particular um, show I didn't want to worry about I mean this demonstration I didn't want to worry about um, all of that for you I just wanted to show you how the tool works and how you could use it I'll leave a link in my description if you want to use it it might save you a lot of time like it did for me um, anyway back to the back to using vellum for packaging um, I then used the tool to basically create the four four sided sort of box um, that I wanted uh, which has an opening at the top and bottom you'll see why I moved it to the origin um, oriented a certain way and then I added a bunch of subdivisions and welded certain points together um, so that it's it doesn't break apart when I actually um, when I actually start simulating it. Um, then I created this version of it with it sort of folded or not folded like um, compressed top, which you would have a bottom rather, um, which you'd have if stuff had to fill in from this side here. Um, I created that. I moved it a certain way. I think I did it upside down because it simulated better. Um, then I created a blend shape for that between this um, and that, which basically just animated animates at a certain point. If I would have selected, it animates at a certain point in the simulation. Um, and then I created an art anal and named it out. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. I created vellum cloth constraints. Um, that I used, I think I used the basic cloth parameters that it comes with when you drop down a cloth, a vellum cloth, um, configure cloth. And then I used the uh, vellum weld to weld 
um, these points here at the top um, at the top here that I'm animating in my blend shape um, and then I set the constraint tab to pin to target so that um, and I ticked on animation uh, match animation so that it actually moves with the animation in the blend shape um, that I created that um, that null for here at the, at the top um, you'll see why shortly uh, when I turn on vellum uh, and then I think one thing to add to that would be the fact that I do also have the contents of what would be in the actual packaging or the shape or the volume of that um, I add, added that as a as a collision as a collider for the vellum solver anyway and then I used oh yes and then I basically simulated it um, as, you can as you can see this is what it does and it gives me that sort of nice organic uh, realistic looking sort of fold at the top I use the polyfill for the top here I honestly actually don't think I needed it um, but I must have thought I needed it at that point but looking back now I didn't need it then I picked out the simulation I found a frame that I liked and then picked out the simulation so that I don't need um, to, to redo that anymore and then I added a clean node because as you know with the vellum um, vellum adds up a bunch of variables that it needs and uh, variables a bunch of attributes that it needs um, to actually simulate so I kind of didn't want that so I created a clean um, and I preserved the UVs because I don't want to have to create the UVs again because that's quite important um, I add the texture back in again just to sort of see how it's deforming and what's happening to especially the front here where you'd have uh, your packaging or the images of what whatever this product might be your favorite brand of something um, I then turned it upside down because that was just the for the, the bottom piece just simulating the bottom piece I think I overlooked the part that's quite important in the volume solver here so in the volume solver you go to the advanced tab this is where you'd swap I think it has its on first input you'd swap it to the sub path and then you basically look for those pins for the animation on the wild uh, which is this is a very important thing I'm glad I didn't forget it um, so that basically makes this work without having it selected on here I'm not sure it works we can actually check that if we want to uh, we simulate yes it doesn't seem like it would work you'd have to have it actually set to the soft part and for the pins otherwise it just pins it wells it tries to it tries to pin them here and there's no animation and that sort of stuff um, okay anyway cool so clean and then I put down the texture again and I turn it upside down and then now what I want to do is create the top part of this um, of the shape of the of the packaging which involves a few things like having this come in like that and the top do that and there's a few other things that I felt were needed like moving this up and I didn't want to just simply move it up I'm, like I'm doing here I wanted to move it up in the simulation because that sort of gives me something a bit more realistic and the UVs won't stretch um, and do that again um, I'm basically just moving it to where I think the shape should be without actually um, messing up the UVs so the, the UVs here would be messed up but if I'm simulating it like this and having this very loose and vellum handling all the physics for me it won't be that stretched or stretched at all then I have it as a plane shape I'm animating the plane shape of what I'm needing uh, from 0 to 1 and then there's also I'm turning this around um, positioning to where I kind of need it to be and I'm also using a blend shape for this for the shape the end shape that I want which is basically just bulking up the bottom here and I want to simulate that in rather than model it in just to preserve the UVs again as I say and then I think I have a what's this a ground thing that I push up do I animate this oh, I thought I was animating it guess I'm not um, Simulation. I'll show you what the simulation looks like. I do basically the same thing I did at the top. 
um, William Cloth, William Wilde with pin to toggle to so match animation on. Just make sure this is ticked on, please. And you select the pins um, that you would have, which would be these ones here for this shapes for this um, blend shape here. Cool, and I basically simulated, and this is what it looks like. Um, actually in my opinion I, I think it came out quite decently for the shape that I had to, to make and then I found a particular frame that I enjoyed on it enjoyed that I liked um, there's a few issues here and there but I think I ended up fixing them maybe they didn't matter when I had it smoothed that might have been a thing but I, did, I think I did fix them I had some normals a quick shade and then there was a few things I needed to fix um i'm deleting a bunch of stuff it might have been those polys that i created in the beginning in the polyfill and again okay, here i'm just like sorting out it's like small stuff as you can tell there's not much difference um in this but i'm just making the shape a bit more appealable i mean appealing sorry um and it's not like vellum has done most of the work for me here like literally vellum has done most of the work for me I'm just sort of nudging it in the right direction and um, making it work for myself and I'm using edit slowly but surely I'm sure I'm using a smooth and not smooth and then I'm flattening out the bottom I seem to have named that uh, for some reason and um, I'm separating certain things here I remember there was issues here and I'm also using a poly bevel for these shop sites that would typically be there that was there for the product um, and yeah and then this, I subdivided and this is what it looks like actually came out quite decently and because it's such a low res um, mesh that I'm processing through vellum it kind of treats it like hard sort of loose hard plastic that these things come in um, this is not the product but this would be the typical product um, that it, you would be making this is not it but this is a typical sort of product this one had like ridges on the edge um, here as you can see some normals it comes out a bit better um, so yeah this is how I went about creating this sort of thing in with Vellum in Houdini um, which seems a bit complicated but honestly it's not um, all you need to remember is to pin to wild um, the vellum wild and pin your animation and using blend shapes to sort of nudge the simulation where you want it to be um, and because it's a model you can do a bunch of other stuff down there you don't have to get it perfect in vellum you just need to get get you 80 percent there and then you'll take care of the last 20 percent um, at the end and add a bit more detail if you need um, so yeah this is how i typically do it i'll leave um, a link to the tool if you guys are interested it's something that helped me out um, and I've reused it quite a bit since I created it cool